Nice. Hello. Welcome to the Tim and Lenny, Lenny and Tim podcast with no name. No, no name podcast. No name, <laughs> no podcast. name podcast. Lenny, Tim, Tim, Lenny. Dude, this is the last one we for this season. Made it. Made 31 it. chapters of this book. Uh, you know what? When we started this, I was like, no way. We got it done. We did get it done. And for me, I, I know it sounds weird, but the sense of accomplishment. A lot of episodes. Is like, and the fact that like people followed along and are following and commenting and still enjoying it. That's amazing. I lost my own interest like 12 podcasts ago. There's a couple in there, a little bit. Um, But I enjoyed like just our banter and the back and forth and the talk. But the book has been heavy. And some of these chapters, the last couple have been some, like, it's been hard. Like the wording and the like getting deeper has been really, really. um, We are not literary scholars. And I'm sure if you're a listener that is a literary scholar, I'm surprised you hung with us that long. Yeah. We've so, got to be way off base. Thank you. And actually, we're very excited the next season. It's going to be coming out really soon. Um, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Plans to just keep this thing rolling yeah, for the for most sure. part. Yeah, and it's so. going to be a surprise. It, yeah, for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have Tim's plan- not going to tell me what it is until I show up to record. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, right after this, we're going to sit. We have time. We're going to sit and we're going to really brainstorm and think through that. But I, oh. I think we have an itch. Even Justin. We should do a season like that, though, in yeah, the future. Our, where our, one person what? shows up with a topic and the other person's totally. Well, that's smart list. Has no, oh, is that a thing? They basically, well, they, have a, they have a guest. They don't know who the guest is. And then, of course, that drives the conversation. Oh, no. I think like, the, we come with like a loaded topic. That's, but the other person has no idea that that's the topic we're going to hit. So actually, that's what I wanted to do. That's actually both of us every time, actually. Like pretty much. And but the book's the topic. Justin yeah. sent me a text and he said, hey, I have a good idea. It's like fireside chats, but where we, it's topical Ooh. conversations from Tim and Lenny's perspective. You all are going to be in for a treat. So I think we're leaning and itching on something Okay. Here. So um, we've started our meeting that we said we wouldn't do until after <laughs> we've done this. So you're invited We started in. it mid-podcast. Mid do you want to read the last chapter? I can do part of it. Okay. So let's, splitsies. let's splitsies. Let's splitsies. Do you want to do pop? Let's do popcorn reading. Ooh. Popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> like we're in second grade. Here we go. My dear, my very dear Wormwood, my poppet, my pig's knee. <laughs> my grandpa used to call his wife. Whoa, what'd she say? Pugs. Pugs? Yeah. Pugsley? Pugs. Just Pugs. pugs. Her just name was Peggy. Pug. So it's like, hey, Pugs. Hey, that pugs. was his sweet word for her. Oh. So that that line there reminds me. Had she me. ever seen a pug before? Because she may have been offended. I never thought of it or equated it to dog. Like, oh, hey. Okay. <laughs> It's like super actually, endearing if you don't know what a pug looks like. Now that you just said that, my grandfather, like that actually makes sense that it would be like double entendre. And oh, he's man. like secretly laughed every time he said <laughs> hey, it. Hey, pugs. And she's I like, hey, honey. see that. <laughs> you idiot. He said, you look oh, like a pug. Uh, Very endearing. Yes. Considering how much kind of fiery. Uh, Especially the last chapter. Yeah, the last couple of chapters, there's been some fiery words from, uh, from Screwtape coming toward Wormwood here. And here we go. My dear, my very dear Wormwood, my poppet, my (laughs) pig's knee. My (laughs) poppet. How mistakenly now that all is lost, you come whimpering to ask me whether the terms of affection in which I address you meant nothing from the beginning. Far from it. Rest assured, my love for you and your love for me are like as two peas. In a pod. (laughs) It doesn't say that, though. Sorry. Very weird. Could demons have love for each other? Let's see. I guess so. Let's see. I have always desired you as you, pitiful fool, (laughs) desired me. (laughs) Rough. Well, at least you put it in parentheses, so maybe he just skipped over that. The difference is that I am the stronger. Mm. I think they will give you to me now. Or a bit of you. Love you? Why, yes. As dainty a morsel as ever I grew fat on. (laughs) Oh, boy. How the tables, how the turns have tabled. (laughs) You have let a soul slip through your fingers. Oh, there's the answer. The howl of sharpened famine for that loss re-echoes at this moment through all the levels of the kingdom of noise down to the very throne itself. And I, it's interesting. He calls it the kingdom of noise. Yeah. Dude, when I was in China, <laughs> you go everywhere, the malls, and it's just, like, just turn it to 11 on yeah, everything. Just noise just, everywhere. I, my head is just constant. And if, if that makes, it gets horrible. Well, I mean, if you think about God's kingdom being a kingdom of peace, mm-hmm. it's opposite. you know, the, it's the, very the contrast to yeah. that would be a kingdom of noise. Mm. It makes me mad to think of it. How well I know what happened at the instant when they snatched him from you. (sighs) There was 
a sudden clearing of his eyes, was there not? As he saw you for the first time and recognized the part you had, you had had in him and knew that you had it no longer. <sighs> Just think and let it be the beginning of your agony. What he felt at that moment, as if a scab had fallen from an old sore, as if he were emerging from a hideous shell-like tetter, as if he shuffled off for good and all a defiled, wet, clinging garment. By hell, it is misery enough to see them in their mortal days taking off dirtied and uncomfortable clothes and splashing in hot water and giving little grunts of pleasure, <laughs> stretching their eased limbs. What then of this final stripping, this complete cleansing? Oh, listen to that word. What then of this final stripping, this complete cleansing? Dude, I don't want to, really don't want to spoil what I think is going on here. Yeah. So I'm just not going to say it. But okay. listener, you uh, might already be thinking about what may, what may have transpired here to yeah. the patient. The more he thinks about it, the worse it becomes. He got through so easily... Oh, the more one thinks about it. So the more that Screwtape thinks about it, the worse it becomes. He got through so easily. No gradual misgivings, no doctor's sentence, no nursing home, no operating theater, no false hopes of life, sheer instantaneous liberation. One moment it seemed to be all our world, the scream of bombs, the fall of houses, the stink and taste of high explosive on the lips and in the lungs, the feet burning with weariness, the heart cold with horrors, the brain reeling, the legs aching. Next moment, all this was gone, gone like a bad dream, never again to be of any account, defeated, outmaneuvered fool. Did you mark how naturally, as if he'd been born for it, the earth-born vermin entered the new life? As if he'd been born for it, wow. How all his doubts became, in the twinkling of an eye, ridiculous. <laughs> oh, wow. I know what the creature was saying to itself. Yes, of course. It always was like this. All the horrors have followed the same course, getting worse and worse and for forcing you into a kind of bottleneck till. At the very moment when you thought you must be crushed, behold, you were out of the narrows and all was suddenly well. The extraction hurt more and more, and then the tooth was out. The dream became a nightmare, and then you woke. You die and die, and then you are beyond death. How could I have ever doubted it? Hmm. Patience got to be gone, right? That's what I'm reading here. Oh, yeah. 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 And just to kind of pause and think about, you know, this whole book, we've been talking about this struggle. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, you kind of, this, this is the lifelong struggle, mm. but, um, and it's not to minimize the things that we experience in right. this life, mm. but to put it in the perspective of in an instant, mm. you know, we'll like, as it's put here for those who are in Christ, mm -hmm. right? Like we'll be relieved. It's like when Jesus talks we'll be about set free from it, true yeah. joy, the analogy gives is childbirth. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's in that moment, it's the tipping point. There's a there's a there's a point by which all of the pain and suffering it's in light of the glory and the joy, and it all is you know, the kind of the way he worded it was is very interesting. The extraction hurt more than the tooth, and then it was out. Yeah, and then it was out. The dream became a nightmare, and then you woke. And yeah. it's this moment where and I was actually just listening to something about this earlier where we are in our human understanding, like, and this is, I think, challenging me, this book, one of the biggest things that's been challenging me is that the reality that we live in today, the, the our physical nature is not our true reality. Yeah. And so we hold on to this thing until the day by which our birth actually happens. It's like in my last breath is the first breath. It's the final breath of my actual life. Like it's the first breath of my life. Yeah. And it's this moment of realization that, yeah, the tension and that soupiness being stuck in the already, but not yet in the already in between the walking dead. I mean, all these are like scriptural references mm -hmm. that then you're like, oh, that's what life is like. This is what it is like to experience it. And the, the drudges of hell on earth has been washed and it's yeah. gone. And I love the wording that they used here where in the emerging where he said, uh, oh, where was it right here? This was such, it was, uh, um, uh, just think, 
what he felt at that moment as if a scab had fallen off from mm-hmm. an old sore, as if he were merging from a hideous shell-like t- tetter, as if he shuffled off for a good and all a defiled, wet, clinging garment. And that's like this idea that that's just off, gone, yeah. you know, the, 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 yeah, wow. There's a, uh, My Epic, the band My Epic. Yeah. They've got a line in a to song today. and it's, uh, death is just the hook behind the door where I'll leave my dirty clothes. That's such a good line. It's yeah. similar to and it's kind of that yeah, idea. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I, it made me think of, uh, if you've read any of other, of uh, C.S. Lewis's um, Chronicles of Narnia, mm-hmm. uh, in the last battle, kind of when he's, he's wrapping everything up and he says, no, this isn't the end of the story. Mm. This is the end of the prologue and the real story starts, starts now. Starts now. As it's, they go into the forever like the Narnia. End of the, the great divorce. I haven't read that one. Well, you haven't read The Great Divorce? I have a feeling it's probably very good. It's just an analogy (laughs) of like this idea of hell and heaven, and it's just this further escape. Uh, But the very end of it, it's just this idea where he felt like he was this immense space, and it was literally, it's almost like the end of MIB when it was like the marbles. Oh, yeah, and they just ended up just being Yeah, you're like, what? Literally, I think they almost stole that basically from the perspective of The Great Divorce. Like there's so much more beyond what we actually believe and understand. Yeah, and what we can fathom. What we fathom can fathom. We're, yeah. We're two dimensional. We're two dimensional yeah. shapes trying to understand a three dimensional world right. or whatever, you know. Yeah. Or is a three dimensional trying to understand a four dimensional? Because we technically are three dimensional. I'm fourth dimensional. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Tapping into the spiritual. I'm sorry, zone. we took shrooms before this <laughs> one. No. Now that would be an interesting podcast. Well, you yeah, have uh, a friend of ours does one, and it's the D and D, and they do the. It's like a, they'll, every oh, now and yeah. then do a drinking D and D. A drinking D and D. It's just like Tim and Lenny trip and talk. That would be very bad. I would probably probably just fall asleep and start drooling. You'd watch. (laughs) Oh, man. We could do Red Bulls. See what happens with a bunch of Red Bulls. Oh, man, and just (laughs) over-caffeinate. That would be... I'm kind of (laughs) in. See how many like how many we could get through, but I couldn't do it at night because I wouldn't oh, be able to sleep. I know I'd have to do it like over the <laughs> oh, summer no. so that I could recover over yeah, seven days. That would be so bad. Oh, we boy. could do the hot one style and just do hot wings and just progressively get hotter and talk about real deep spiritual things. <laughs> oh, all right, well let's keep. Yeah, so good. Yeah, I'll keep cruising. Yeah, this is great. All right, um, you d- so. The patient kind of thinking in his last moments. Mm-hmm. The dream became a nightmare, and then you woke. The di- you die and die, and then you are beyond death. How could I? Have, how could I have ever doubted it? As he saw you, he also saw them. I know how it was. You reeled back, dizzy and blinded, more hurt by them than he had ever been by bombs. <laughs> the degradation of it that this thing of earth and slime could stand upright and converse with spirits before whom you, a spirit, could only cower. Perhaps you had hoped that the awe and strangeness of it would dash his joy. But that is the cursed thing. The gods are strange to mortal eyes, and yet they are not strange. He had no faintest conception till that very hour of how they would look and even doubted their existence. But when he saw them, he knew that he had always known them and realized what part each one of them had played at many an hour in his life when he had supposed himself alone. So that now he could say to them one by one, not who are you, but so it was you all the time. All that they were and said at this meeting woke memories. The dim consciousness of friends about him, which had haunted his solitudes from infancy, was now at last explained. That central music in every pure experience, which had always just evaded memory, was now at last recovered. Recognition made him free of their company almost before the limbs of his corpse became quiet. Only you were left outside. We're thinking those are like his guardian angels, like angelic. Yeah, I think there's a piece where he they're describing again what we can't see. Yeah. And it's very I mean the Bible talks about from Genesis all the way to Revelation. I'm thinking of the story of Absalom and the on the donkey. Do you know that story, right? Not Balaam. 
Balaam and the donkey. That's what I meant to say. Oh, okay. Yeah, Absalom's the guy who got hung with his hair. Saul's ah. son, whatever. Balaam with the donkey, yeah, where he's going to go. He's a priest, right? Oh, that's right. No, the he's donkey the prophet. sees the... Uh, the oh. sees the angel, yeah, right? right? He's like freaking out and trying to like explain to the guy, like, keep going, you're going to get killed, and he can't see it, and all of a sudden the donkey turns and talks. God opens his mouth <laughs> like, what are you doing, dummy? Like, can't you see it? And then his eyes are open, and he sees this angel, and then he's like, ah. like freaking out, right? Um, so I'm thinking of that in this moment where there are, again, and this is a shadow by which is actually happening around. I think one of the right. best depictions of that, have you ever seen Keanu Reeves in Constantine? No, not all of it. I've seen like, I think I caught part of it on Sci-Fi Channel okay. when I still had cable. I really like that ago, movie. But, Justin, great movie. okay. Great I movie. I'm looking okay. at like the, okay. So our, Justin, our producer, he loves it. So I love it too. It's actually one of, I, I actually own that movie. I probably watched it way too many times, but he like, is trying to figure out he, Constantine knows the story of Constantine, right? He kills demons to try and sure. earn his soul back from God, basically. That's he's a cartoon character, a Marvel character, Marvel character, Marvel like character, beats up demons. It's pretty cool, right? DC character. DC. Oh, it's Ooh, DC. It's darker. That makes a lot more sense. Thank you. Correct my worlds, my superhero worlds. I gotta get it right. But, anyways, I actually think that they got the depiction of heaven or earth and hell, right? They, and he, heaven. And what they did was, which was very interesting, is he wanted to kind of figure out what was going on in hell for some reason. So this was weird, but he did some kind of incantation, like l l buckled himself into the seat to like transport himself into hell. Crazy. Okay. So whatever. That's not real. Maybe it is. I don't know. But when he did that, though, it depicted hell here on earth. And so all around him was what you would normally see that would be around him just with flames and the hell and the burning and the, and the, and the ghouls and, and it was in, but you can recognize LA. It was but in it was like, like real time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was very, like, and, was and then like, same with heaven, like the trans side of heaven was the same thing in the exact same dimension happening. And they mm -hmm. could both communicate with one another hmm. and that the middle earth the middle world was earth in between the two and the tension of the two. And it was very uh. interesting seeing that parallel and that dynamic because the reality is, is like when we talk about it and we see these interactions in heaven and hell uh, in scripture and there's pieces where you're Jesus interacting with demons or these characters that are demon possessed, but there's something beyond them happening. And then there's angels that are involved, but it's only like when your eyes are open, there's glimpses you see and there's a sense of it that's going on that there is so much more happening when you talk to, like when you read through the stories of like Elijah or it was uh, 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 Isaiah, where the no, it was Elijah, where the angels like, hey, I tried coming to you sooner, but I couldn't because I was doing battle in this city with the mm. the demon of that city who was like covering the whole city, and it took me a couple of days. So my archangel Michael came and he did battle so that I could leave. Like what? That, as if that yeah. was normal. Yeah. <laughs> so there's these dynamics where we're reading this, where these demons are normalizing, where he's finally his eyes were open and saw what was actually happening all along. Is is very interesting way and perspective to have to think about it. Yeah, yeah it's very very interesting. Well, do you want to take it from here? Sure. It looks like we're almost to the end. Pop, right? yeah, say it though. Oh, popcorn Tim. Yeah. Oh, okay. no wonder I was kind of like trying to give space, and then you would take popcorn Tim. <laughs> All right, good. I got it. <laughs> Jeez, how dumb am I? All right. He saw not only capital T them. He saw him capital H him. This animal, this thing begotten in a bed, could look on him. What is blinding, suffocating fire to you is now cool light to him. Is clarity itself and wears from the, the form, I'm sorry, is clarity itself and wears the form of a man. Oh, where's the form of a man? Like the form that he's seeing is a form of a man. Yeah. Like the story like the spirit of that he's is seeing man. of him, the capital. No, what he's saying is when he sees God, he sees him in the form of a man. That's what they're saying. So he not only saw them, capital T, that's the plural. He saw right, him. which would have been the... This animal, this thing begotten in a bed, that's the human, right? Could only look on capital him. What is blinding, suffocating fire to you, the demon is now yeah. cool light to him, is clarity itself and wears the form of a man. So I'm thinking of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, and they see the fourth entity sitting with them. It looks like a man. And a lot of people translate it as Jesus sitting with them. Right. And that's kind of this piece where like there's a... They're seeing God in the form of Christ. Yeah. That's what I'm reading there. Yeah. That's the first thing he's... But it's then interesting. he's able to look on Jesus and, if, and not be burnt the way that... 
the demons are. The demons and are. And they're seeing it happen. Imagine that yeah. too, though, that perspective. So like the story when Jesus says with Lazarus mm-hmm. and he's in heaven and then the, the rich guy's in hell and there's this dynamic where they can communicate to one another. Right. So that, that's where these references great, are coming. Great chasm, yeah. And so there's this piece here where they're seeing the redemption happening of the souls they were trying to take, but they couldn't. And that in of itself is a hell. To them, yes. Yeah. And... Uh, I think there's kind of this looking down because they are spiritual beings. So they, as spirits, they like screw tape clearly has communicated this through the, through the story, look down on the animals, Yeah. The like that they would give, that God would give mankind yeah. this kind of favor, mm-hmm. even though we're, you know, like these disgusting animals. We can't that see was what made in see. a bed. Yeah, exactly. In this the thing, dirt. this thing that was begotten in a bed. Yeah. Can yeah. look upon him. Can look upon him. Gosh. And uh, yeah. So it goes on. You would like, if you could, to interpret the patient's prostration in the presence, his self appearance and utter knowledge of his sins. Yes, Wormwood, a clear knowledge, even clearer knowledge, even than yours, on the analogy of your own choking and paralyzing sensations when you encounter the deadly air that breathes from the heart of heaven. But it's all nonsense. Pains he may still have to encounter, but they embrace those pains. They would not barter them for any earthly pleasure, all the the delights of sense or heart or intellect with which you could have once tempted him. Even the delights of virtue itself now seem to him in comparison, but as the half nuances, uh, um, the half nauseous. nauseous attractions of a rattled harlot would seem to a man who hears that his true beloved whom he has loved all his life and whom he had believed to be dead is alive and now at his door. Mm. <sighs> he is caught up into the world where pain and pleasure take on trans, trans oh, take on transfinite, trans, transfinite, transfinite. transfinite. So it's like he can feel it finally. Mm-hmm. So they weren't, but now he can values and all our arithmetic is dismayed. Once more, the inexplicable meets us. Next to the course of useless tempters like yourself, the greatest curse upon us is the failure of our intelligence department. If only we could find out what he is really up to. <laughs> the capital H, he being mm, God, right? Yeah. Alas, alas, that knowledge in itself so hateful and wish making a thing. I'm sorry, mash. What is that word? Mockish? In itself, so hateful and mawkish a thing. That he's, mo- is it mockingly? It's no. a sentimental and a feeble or st- sickly way. A mawkish poem. Interesting. I huh. never heard of it. Okay. Should be, should yet be necessary for power. Sometimes I am almost in despair. All that sustains me is the conviction that our realism, our rejection in the face of a temptations of all silly nonsense and claptrap must win in the end. Meanwhile, I have you to settle with most truly do I sign myself. You're increasingly and ra- ra- ravenously affectionate uncle screw tape. Weird way to end. I think. Well, I mean, it's ending the way that we were hoping. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, and I don't know. You kind of read these like at the end of the story, like, and they all lived happily ever that's after. That's what this like, is. Like, we're like the deep, the wormwood that has been trying to tempt this guy who made it to heaven is going to get devoured. Yeah. Like, but this guy was cool. was killed in a, in a, in a raid. Yeah. Cause they're talking about the bombs. And yeah. Things over he there. didn't and make it like, so gone. the patient, yeah. you know. The it's kind of, it's an him. abrupt, the, yeah, the war took him, Yeah. but in the taking of him in something so tragic, cause I think we, you know, oh, but he was, he was engaged and he yeah. had his life in front of him and yeah. like, you forget about those things. Yeah. And then you go, the thing that was waiting for him mm-hmm. outweighed all of it, everything else that was there. Yeah. The that word perspective. That yeah. they use, I almost actually started tearing up and then I couldn't figure out that word, but all the delights of sense or heart or intellect with which you could once have tempted him, even the delights of virtue itself now seem in him comparison, but as the half nauseous attractions of a rattled harlot. So mm. a used whore basically yeah. would seem to a man who hears that his true beloved, whom he has loved all his life and whom he had believed to be dead is alive. And now 
at his door. Like that line right mm. there is like in comparison of everything, yeah. it's all like trash. It's rubbish. Yeah. When you're standing before so many parallels to scripture. Oh yeah. yeah you that know, was so thick right there. That and, line uh, of itself is just this. I think about the parable of the treasure, which I think yeah. I brought up in, in past yeah. episodes, you know, mm-hmm. like the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man found in a field. Yeah. And he covered it back up and in his joy went and sold all that he had so that he could obtain that field. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but the line that know. I find so powerful, and this is what's so encouraging is the one right here. And I think this is probably for me mm. in the book is this one where he says, um, up to a man who hears that his true beloved whom he has loved all his life. And mm. when we read the story of the difficulties with his mom, with the war, with the girls, with the culture, with the back and forth, with his politics, with his policies, with his, like all of the things he went through, which I identified with, we identified yeah, with a with lot, a lot of, of those them. things. But when you look at the deepest parts of my soul, like I truly deep in my heart, what I deepest, most want and desire is like, I don't know how to receive God's love and I just want to be loved by him. Mm-hmm. And that's the journey I'm on right now. But deepest part of my heart, like that's what I want. And I, and, and I, and seeing that, that that's the thing that held, that he gets to experience. Like that's yeah. the release. That's the peace. The one longing, the deepest longing in his soul, despite all of the other craziness. And even if he never him. really was aware of that lo- yeah. longing. Yeah, fully. And there was times he wasn't yeah. at all. He was even, he didn't even know he was being tempted at times. Like he didn't even yeah. acknowledge that. Well, like, I wonder how much thing. time had transpired between him becoming a, a Christian and not. And yet we he's no looking idea. back as he's meeting these you know, I'm thinking angelic beings and he's going, it was you all along who protected me from that or this yeah. or that other or thing. Or that walked with me long before he had yeah. given his faith, yeah. had made a faith decision yeah. long before that yeah. had been there. And I wonder how many things, you know, like the fullness of, I don't know how much we're going to know or will be yeah. revealed to us, but like, yeah. I'm sure that if I were to look back over the course of my life within the, through the lens mm-hmm. of, of God's work in all of the moments, not just the moments when I, yeah, was a was a good Christian or a good believer, mm-hmm. but in all of the moments of my life, how I how how quickly I would recognize, yeah, you know, and and how much more everything would make sense if I yeah. were to see it from that perspective. Yeah. Well, it's also very interesting that even when he was standing before God and all of his sins were basically laid out, like he yeah, just he, was did, like, he could feel all of them, <laughs> yeah, but it didn't matter, yeah. Because their grace, their mer- like what drew that out of them just covered all of it, which was powerful too. Like it's this piece where we feel like we're unworthy, we are, but yet we're made worthy. Like it's in that moment, in that place. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm. Good. Good stuff. Yeah. I mean, overall, 31 chapters later, beginning to scratch and shift the perspective of looking at my life through a much more eternal perspective mm. so I can detach from the moments and detach from my anger or jealousy or feelings of inadequacy and all of these things that I wrestle with and are continu- continuing to swim around in, um, that I can go, oh, I'll be reminded that they're in light of, all of it is in light of the eternal working of Christ, like in the long run. And yeah. so... That for me, I think like this book has challenged me to remind me and challenge me of that practice because it's like Ecclesiastes, like life is but a breath. Yeah. It's meaningless. It's meaningless without the glory of God, without yeah. first looking to the deeper part. Like the whole Ecclesiastes is all about like, is do you, anything and everything you do, is it because you want it's to bring glory point. to God? Yeah. Everything, Does that make sense? everything's, but there's no point to doing anything, but with God. There's, there we, there can be purpose in everything. Right. Yeah. Even suffering. And that's what he deals with yeah. in that book. And that's, in a sense, this piece of like, oh, there's, there's, like, that rings true then in the scriptures, like, nor height nor death, nor anything can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Or like, you know, God works out all things for good who love him for a call to court his promise. Like, you have all these pieces in scripture and these nuances from Genesis all the way to Revelation of, of those, of those, like, the thread of redemption, and it's so hard. To, you just forget it when you get caught up in the the everyday. Yeah, or in what's right in front of us. And yeah. I think you know, as I, I was thinking about like the big picture, but even even the small picture, like if if something feels like it's going to last forever, just go to bed and wake up in the morning, <laughs> and it's and it's and and it's not you know like I don't know maybe that's that's oversimplifying things, but man. I can I can get so hung up on some things, yeah. and all it takes is for me to just 
wait till the morning mm -hmm. and I can, I can, and, and there's a refresh, you know, mm -hmm. you awake refresh or whatever, but like, I don't know, I live with a lot of that angst of like, what is going on? What am I doing? What's, you know, whether that's, we're looking at the, the state of the world or the state of our, of our individual lives or whatever. And you're state like, of my bank account. Yeah. State of my bank. Right. <laughs> and, and I think there's part of it too. That's like, you know, I, I for sure, if you if it's ever come across for me, like you just need to work harder to, to get God to love you or to be happy or whatever, like, yeah, uh, you know, I'm sorry that that was ever miscommunicated. I don't think I've ever <laughs> communicated it like that. Um, but at the same time, there is very much like a, like God uses that frustration and that tension to drive us forward. Mm -hmm. Like right now as a, as a math teacher, we're coming off of a year and a half of uh, students that have not done much. Like there are those that have done it, but the yeah. vast majority of my students are like... They become experts on TikTok. They've done very little work and it's very hard, not just like academically to like close the academic gap, but like as a work ethic, like to close, mm -hmm. to like, to kick start their work ethic back in. That's they because they have to rebuild. I bet you that year and a half off, because it's not just math, we're talking all education. In all a sense, education. It has to rebuild a ton of behaviors back in. Yeah. And like uh, an ability to keep up. Because their blog probably slept until whenever, slept whenever they want, like just yeah. physically. There I, were, I have some that. students that flat out look at me and they're like, I did nothing and passed. And, you know, like yeah, my teachers passed yeah. me along. Yeah. And I don't want to do anything now. Yep. You know, and. And so trying to like reignite that. Yeah. And so I'm trying to, it's really hard to, to like, you dangle the carrot and you're like, okay, come on, just a little bit. You can learn, like you're learning that you can do this and, and we're building motivation through confidence. But also there's a lot to be said for like motivation by just getting your freaking butt kicked. Mm -hmm. Like, like you had no idea what you were doing on that test and mm. here's your 15% paperback. And like, it's hard because you never, like, could that just destroy a kid and they give up? Yeah. Or yeah. is that enough? I've, I've seen for some students, they hated the way they felt on that first quiz. Right. I'm tears. Like, yeah. like there were teardrops. There were stains on the test <laughs> from kids crying. Yeah. And it was, it was hard for me to watch them go through that. But... Some of those kids, that has been, now it's reignited and kicked them into gear because mm -hmm. they're like, screw that. I don't want to feel like that again. Yeah. So I'm going to get it together. So the last thing I'd ever want to speak to is like, hey, just get your life together because that's, you know, willpower kind of like religion or willpower like life yeah. management doesn't create people who love people. It creates people who are judgmental and, yeah. and awful. Um, but... Sometimes that tension is just what we need to like kick yeah. us into gear th and like fix the things or yeah. address the things that we, that are frustrating us in our lives. I've been like for years, so afraid of, well, you share grace and then you talk about works. Yeah. And it's interesting coming from a place, but I think that when you talk about grace, you can't talk about grace without repentance because with proper repentance, you actually can acknowledge how broken and how you've contributed to breaking those around you to the wake mm -hmm. of your decisions. And then from that place though, and this is where like I go is like when you, when the Holy Spirit, like you go, you recognize, you see it, you want to begin to activate and shift and like, okay, Lord, what can I do? How can I, it's the works kicks in, in some ways. And right. I don't, I don't know how to word this exactly. Cause I think this is something I'm kind of like working through in my own like life as I experience this, but like you move to a point where now you don't operate with a lens of judgment because you yourself have only swam in the pool of grace. Mm -hmm. And as you begin to grow through that and the spirit like rebuilds you from the inside out with love, joy, peace, it's not perfect by any means, but there's a measure of that in your life that you're like, Whoa, I can taste it. I can yeah, see there's it. There's a drive toward it. Yeah. yeah. And you begin to see some things, you grow healthier in certain areas of your life, both emotionally, spiritually, mentally, you see things a little bit more clear, but with the clarity should not come 
well, I say the word should not because I hate shooting on people because that's self-righteous in of itself. But this idea of where you go, because I remember the pain and the suffering in the place I've come from, which is the mud, and technically I should still be there, Yeah, that you have grace for people and whatever and God gives you, you yeah. want to give away. And so like there's this piece I was just reading through, the, I'm reading through the Old Testament again, and there's this, this line in just, I guess number two, I mean, Deuteronomy had to go like five books of the Pentateuch because I'm almost done with Deuteronomy. But like the first part of Deuteronomy is basically it's like what happened in all of Leviticus and Numbers summed up in the one chapter, which is basically like two days where Moses preaches this giant sermon basically yeah. to sum up the last 40 years. Yeah. And like, hey, I preached this once, but now it's been 40 years. That group is all gone. And now before you go into the promised land, let me sum everything up, yeah. right? Remember, well, yeah. in it, he gives this line and it's, oh, it's crazy. He goes, okay, so when you go into the promised land and you're there, remember it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be hard to get there, but you're there. You're going to be blessed. I'm going to bless you. But remember you're there, not because of anything you did. You're all still a bunch of whores. <laughs> Is that what he says? Yeah. That's hilarious. Like, and I'm paraphrasing it, but in a sense, yeah. it's like, you are all still very unfaithful. Yeah. And the fact that I'm blessing you has nothing to do with you, but everything to do with me and who I am yep. to give you what you don't deserve so that you can give it to others. Yep. And it was when they began to go, oh, we deserve it. And they would stockpile it and not give it away that then God would be like, what are you doing? I created you. You're my yeah. people to bless the world, to give and make the kingdom of heaven. And you're stealing it again for yourself. You're robbing me. By mm -hmm. holding on to this, and it's in that place where if we – and he goes, what, and what's he asking to do? Remember what I did for you in Egypt. Right. And that's what I mean by like when we grow, and you're talking about this growth, like when we give that test to that, that person, whoever it was, who cried over it, like they're like, I remember how bad it was, and I don't like feeling that. And there's a true sense of remorse in that. Yeah. And there's this pain. They go, okay, well, what do I need to do to grow? Yep. And that's in the spiritual sense. And so often we don't want to go through that pain no. as Christians. Especially we the go, older we get. Yep, like the, he, the, we just go, give me the answer. What's the three things I need to fix it and make it look like it's a facade. Right. But the reality is like we need to be broken from the inside out and acknowledge and see how much our slavery has actually affected us yeah. and how it's affected those around us and carry that, lament that. In the Old Testament, when they talked about uh, sackcloth and ashes of repentance, it was when they realized they did something wrong, they sat in it. The sackcloth and ashes was to go, think of how your sin affected you and everyone around you. Yeah. Sit in it. Then from there... That's bullying. Just kidding. It is. <laughs> but but from that place then, grow through that. And so that's yeah. the piece of growth that I think is very important. But we so often just want to have yeah. fruit in our life, but we don't go through the seasons of pruning, dormancy, which is the quietness and like the, just the sitting in it, and then the growth, which is also painful, to then yeah. experience the fruit. We just want to put fake... And that's that's the, that's Christ. That's what I mean. When he's in the garden, that's what he's like, please take this cup from me. I don't want to take on this suffering, right? Yeah. But he endured the cross. He endured the things that we could never endure so that he gives it to us and gives us God's glory. Like, are you kidding me? And we give it back to him. That's the idea of this, right? It's just... Hmm. So going back to what you're saying, I was just trying to get at, like, I guess I'm trying to muse and talk through this piece of quote-unquote growth. But if it's rooted in repentance is the seed of reconciliation long term. Yeah. Does that make sense? And so yeah. often we don't want to go through the lamenting and the repentance. I think I brought this up the last time we talked about it, but like repentance is, you know, not just acknowledging and, and turning from, mm -hmm. but it's returning to yes. what yeah. God had originally designed us mm -hmm. to be, mm -hmm. the way that God had... A, that God does see us as good mm -hmm. and return to the good that I've, that I've created mm -hmm. you to be. Yeah. And that to me is just such a cool, like motivating thing because it's usually like return because you're a piece of crap, No, you know? Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 you're off the, you're off the track yeah. and return to the track that I've always intended you to be on, it's which like is to be good in this is, world. Right? Yeah. He's, he's, let me, let me complete the good work I started in you. Right? Yeah. Let me finish that. As the yeah. author and the perfect of our faith. Like, and it's that yeah. we're coming back to, it's surrendering back to, it's like the, it's like the prodigal son coming home to the dad who throws the party. Yep. And we have the choice to stand back like the older brother and be like, I don't think he doesn't deserve the party. I don't deserve the party. No, but just welcome to the party. Put yeah. the ring on, wear the coat and enjoy it. Life's too hard to not party. Surely. And just re like bathe, <laughs> bathe in the gospel of the Enjoy grace, the, the story things, yeah. of the grace, you know, and it just, this, so, and that's, that's, we just want to control it. And I was just talking to a couple people about this yesterday, but anyways, I think that'll come up more, but like, so through this book and I'm sensing and seeing like, we are under attack 
our soul, our spirit. We keep fighting to try quickly make it our own, take mm-hmm. away the pain. We like easy. But in the midst and through all of those things, what I saw in that last line, which is super powerful, was he returned to his first love. Yeah. That's, that had always been there. It's always, it had always been there. And all of the other things, all of the other, even good things, all of, and that's interesting that on in that line, all the delights of sense or heart or intellect, which you could have once tempted him, even the delights of virtue itself. So even the good thing, yeah. even the, the delights that come from doing good right. oh. were, were a, you know, a dim mm-hmm. light in comparison to the eternal kind of weight of, uh, now I'm in, now I'm in Corinthians, right? But it's, yeah. it's a dim light in, in relation to the weight of eternal glory that that we've been invited into so cool yeah what a way to end it very good screw yeah. tape letters yeah so done yeah done high done five. and dusted do we do high fives i think so i think so high five for sure and uh thank you for journeying with us and again just keep your eye open it's not i don't think we're gonna wait too long maybe a week or two um yeah my goal would be at most keep these rolling yeah let's just keep these um rolling. so that that way and and, and um we could just keep seeing things move i i don't know what i'm saying at the end of this but just just keep your eyes open they'll be rolled through and i'll put it on i forgot to put stuff on my like instagram and those types of things to tell people but yeah I it's all right thank you on. for sticking with us yeah. and like i just appreciate you listener yeah just, and the encouragement too yeah. the text messages the comments the the mentions the this all that's really fun it's just fun to engage yeah. so if you have an idea and some things you'd like us to oh that'd be great like us to talk about just let us know um yeah. and you know how to get a hold of us yeah it's what's hard for me is like i'm not like a not that but i'm just not one that's big to put myself out there because i'm like who cares you know yeah so but there's so impact. like promotion see, and yeah, those things like see. i'm just like i'm just not like that and we've know? heard but, that we have impact and it's interesting because like i want to fight that so often <laughs> yeah. for whatever reason i'm like self def- what do you call it when you like defecating just kidding de- but, defecating yeah, yeah self-defecating self-defecating but uh that's a joke deprecating whatever that is and so anyways but decimating there's Anyways, delegating. Yeah, we're excited because we know it actually proves valuable for us, but also for those of you that are listening. So thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. That's it. Clean it out. Decimating. <laughs> I couldn't think. I think I already used that one. So we'll see you guys in, in the next one. And may God's grace and peace be with you. I stole we'll your you line. All next right. Bye bye. <laughs>